Here we go. And we are back on the air for that weekly live chat with the fantastic Jason Spees about oil field news and other items of intrigue. Good morning, Jason. How are you? Doing well, and how are you doing today? Fantastic. It's a lovely day. Thank goodness it's Friday. I'm feeling I'm feeling ready for the weekend, even We're, if it just to sleep in a little bit in the morning. <laughs> I the days are getting a little bit different, you know, and I I've got a dog and so I take the dog out quite a bit for his walks and actually we've turned him into bike rides because I just he tires me out. She tires me out, you know. I mean, I think we put on 35 miles the other day just she's just non-stop running and so wow. Right, but I've noticed that nights are getting a little cooler. It's um it's getting to that time where fall's already starting to set in, and we haven't even gotten to the dog days of August, but it's it's just noticeable. So what anyway, it's a little weird. crisp at night. Right. Well, right. let's see. What do we got going on this week in energy? All kinds of stuff. Roll back on methane, which is good news for the small to mid-sized companies, and they needed a break. Uh, as you know, so much centralization happens, so much consolidation, no matter what industry you're in. You could take a look at almost any industry from mobile homes to funeral parlors to fast food, to whatever you want. And it's generally just a handful of companies that control the majority of the marketplace. And it's nice to see when they take away some regulations or at least make it so the little guy or the mid-sized guy can have a shot. Now, that doesn't mean the big guy can't have a shot, too. That's the disadvantage is that the big guy can just come in and overspend and kind of bully his way in. But the smaller people at least have the ability to be quick and nimble and figure out some opportunities. So uh, that's happened this week in energy. The methane rollback was, um, they, they, they got political with it. They started Obama era methane and this and that and I, I wish they would just get away from that and just go right into okay we scaled it back to x amount of this and x amount of y amount of that and just get away from obamacare and 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 uh trump energy and and that sort of thing i get it it happens when it's in the administration but it, it it's it's one of those strategies where the media picks and chooses in order to polarize an issue. And I wish they'd focus on the facts and focus on the science and the sterile part of things. I know it's not very sexy, but sometimes sometimes it just shouldn't be. So anyway, um, I don't know if you'd care to comment on the methane rollback. I mean, I, I, I know how much you follow that, Jenica. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's my favorite. No. I, well, it's so it's it's so funny that that's the part that just bothers me is that, you know, really the energy industry, and the and I would even say the government have, have done a terrible job of educating the youth about about energy and about and you know and the, and the farmers must have gone through this in the seventies and eighties when the grocery store took over the farmers, in terms of perception of where it comes from now, and I've mentioned this before. So many people think our energy comes from the light switch. They don't understand that, you know, 70% of it comes from coal and 20% of it comes from natural gas and 10% comes from uh, hydro and, and, fa and um, wind and solar and that sort of thing, biomass. They don't get that. What they get is that when they flick on their light switch, there's their energy. Just like when they go to the grocery store, there's their ground beef. They don't want to know about the slaughter. They don't want to know about the harvesting. They don't want to know about any of that. And it's, it's got to be frustrating for the people in the industry. And like I said, the farmers have been through this. And look what's happened to them. Boy, their industry got just annihilated. The poor dairy industry. Poor dairy yeah. industry. Oh, just terrible. And then you take a look at... Uh, if, if you're a grain farmer, I mean, what do you want? Paper or plastic? You want corn or soy? It just, it all depends on where the subsidies come. So it's, it's not like you have a lot of opportunity to, 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 I mean, you do, but good luck. There's no safety net and there's no check from the government unless you do X, Y, and Z. So it's, it's a little bit interesting that that 
energy industry is going that way too. And we've talked about ag 2.0 before, and a lot of people got kind of irritated at me when I, when I bring this stuff up. But I'll tell you what. One of the things that we're looking at doing this next month, in fact, we're looking at hiring somebody here at The Crude Life because we've got to, we, we've got to change our business a little bit because if you take a look around, boy, the government is getting in all kinds of businesses. Holy smokes. If you're in the podcast business, good luck. Man, every state agency and state now is getting in the podcast business and they got big budgets. So you're now competing with them. Now you're competing with Ron Burgundy. Now you're competing with the radio stations. Now you're competing with the state governments doing podcasts. So when you take a look at where the governments are getting into businesses, you know, the water business here and this business here and, um, you know, the media business, they've been in the media business for a long time. I mean, they got kids out selling, selling advertisements at schools. So, I mean, it, it's, it's nothing new here. They, they, they just kind of pick and choose what industry they, they, they want to go and infiltrate. But um, now I'm totally getting off on a tangent here. And I, I'm not even sure where I started with this conversation. I know that I was talking about Ag 2.0 is where I was going. But uh, where we're going with the crude life is we're going to do a little bit more um, journalism, a little more long format, and we're also going to bring some fun. So a little bit of work hard, play hard mentality. But one of the questions that we rose the other day was, I wonder how many rigs are actually just self-sufficient right now and how many of them are being financed by the government? I mean, in North Dakota, they just injected millions of dollars to shut in some wells. That if they wouldn't have injected that, who knows what, what would have happened. They would have just left them be. So I'm, I'm really curious to see if this is kind of a back door to usher in a kind of a um, ag 2.0 in the oil and gas industry, which which I thought for a long time was the last bastion of capitalism. I mean, yeah, it was controlled at OPEC, and there was some manipulation in the marketplace, but but overall, it was still the last bastion for capitalism. And I see that going away more and more every single week. The PPP, the ag shut-in money, the CARES money, we got to control it down in Texas, the Railroad Commission. So it's happening, folks. It's Ag 2.0, and as much as people don't like that, it's, it's, it's going that direction. But uh, anyway, that's, that's um, just kind of the 5,000-foot view, and we're going to investigate that a little bit more as far as how many. Like last week we talked about Wyoming going down to Rig 2.0. Well, this week Wyoming, the federal government, BLM, decided to auction off some of the leases. So again, this is government-controlled, just like Ag What's that? You want to you, you, you want to grow some poppies? Well, good luck. We're not going to subsidize that. What's that? You want to grow peppers? Well, we're not going to subsidize that. You can do corn or soy. You can do some sunflowers. And you can do potatoes, but nobody else. I mean, it's just it's it's getting to that point in energy. Uh, in the Bakken, by the way, the barbecues next week. I'd like to talk about that if you don't mind. No, go for it. I mean, you, you can comment on my, you know, my, my lovely opinions. I know you folk likes my, my, my opinions when I kind of go on my soapbox. So I got to, I got to, uh, you know, get, get that out. But the Bach and Barbecue's next week. And it's a two-day event, actually, because I've kind of piggybacked as the MC. I've MC'd it now all but one year. It's the eighth annual uh, all proceeds go to Make-A-Wish, North Dakota. We cracked 100000 last year, which is amazing uh, to do something like that and be able to donate $100,000 so that children with uh, very serious illnesses can have wishes granted, whether it's going to Scotland to visit castles or go to Alaska to do some deep sea fishing. These are the types of uh, wishes that are being granted on an annual basis because of the Bach and Barbecue, and I'm very grateful to be a part of it. And it's Friday, August 21st. It's just right up the road from Bellefouche. In fact, we've got some people from Gillette that are coming up. They just sent me an email. Uh, canine pipe, Pipeline Sniffing Dogs, they're going to come up. And it's a good time. You know, they, they've put in the social distancing. they got the tables apart, that sort of thing. They've got the cookers. Now, the cookers are down a little bit. After, after setting records this year, COVID happened, and then they lost a few. But then their big-dollar donations are up. 
So that's a good sign. Um, there's a two-day event Thursday, the night before on the 20th, Thursday, August 20th. We have a live recording session with Living the Crude Life. So the crude life here, we, we're going out on location, just like we did down in Greeley, Colorado, and Watford City. Now we're going to Dickinson, North Dakota, where we're going to have the mayor of Bismarck, North Dakota. We're going to have the co-founders of the Bach and Barbecue. And they get this title, Community Enhancement Director of Watford City. He's going to join us as well. So Steve Bakken, the mayor of Bismarck, Jackie Jenkin, Tiffany Steiner, co-founders of the Bakken Barbecue, and Patrick Bertinoli, the Community Enhancement Director for Watford City. We're going to have a panel discussion where we're going to talk about the question or the thesis for the night is how oil and gas creates culture and community. How oil and gas builds culture and community. It's builds, not creates. How oil and gas builds culture and community. And the way we do the live in the crude life is the audience can ask questions. In fact, when we were in Greeley, one of the audience members became one of the panel people because apparently she was running for the House Senate or something like that. And, and the one uh, of our panelists uh, called her out and she ended up being a part of our panel. It was great. And that's, that, that's the part of living the crude life. Sometimes you got to change the oil going 75 miles an hour down the interstate. You just roll with it. And that's what we're doing. So Thursday night is the living the crude life live recording session. And then Friday is the big barbecue, the eighth annual barbecue. Should be a good time. Thousands are expected. And uh, they got, you know, live auction, raffle tickets, free food, well, it's tw- tw- uh, 10, 20 bucks at the door, and then it's free food once you get inside. And then there's a, a DJ and a number of different things. So it should be a very good time. Kitty Corner, kids got, can play games and keep occupied, that sort of thing. I'm bringing my dog. Should be fun. So anyway, I, I, I should probably take a pause here and let you chime in if you have a question. I, I don't have any questions. I don't know. The barbecue sounds fun. I, I really love seeing your uh, social media updates, too, and I... I had to smile every time you talked about your dog. She's so cute. Oh, Moochie, yes. For those of you out there, Moochie is my Chesapeake Bay Retriever. It was a stray dog. I volunteer, and I have for a long time here in the Fargo-Moorhead area, with some of the foreign students. And so when the uh, Black Lives Matter protests happen and a lot of the different things, I volunteered with some of the foreign kids because before, what I did was I, I would read them English, 8th and ninth graders. Uh, they would come to America, and they wouldn't know any English or very little English. So imagine being a junior high kid trying to figure out, you know, the lost in translation, the whole culture change, and, and you really don't know a lot of English. So I spent a lot of years just reading basically kids' books to a lot of foreign junior high and high school kids. So when the Black Lives Matter and the protests happened, I, I volunteered some of my services to the uh, foreign uh, protesters who needed some assistance with their speech writing and just trying to figure out the system a little bit more and that sort of thing. Well, at one of the events, this uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, this little puppy, about 10 months old at the time, just basically wouldn't leave me alone, just was there and 30, 40 people there. And so uh, I ended up taking it in, fostering it, ended, ended up adopting it. And it's, uh, we call it moochie because it just mooches and it won't leave my sight. It's just, it, I'm, it's, uh, it has, I, I'm pretty sure it has like separation anxiety or whatever that's called because I, I am its service animal. I mean, you get fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I went to the gro- uh, gas station the other day and I left him in the car and I just went inside to pay and the convenience store worker was outside having a smoke and. He looked over, and the dog just started freaking out like it was getting abused. And and he goes, boy, if I didn't see that, I think that dog was abused. That was hilarious because she just acts like I ain't coming back. And anyway, so I know. We joke that I'm, I'm its service animal. So, And she's under me right now as we speak. But I bring Moochie to these live events. In fact, she sits behind me and, and has a good time and that sort of thing. So if you're coming out to the Bakken Barbecue the night before, August 20th, and then, of course, we have uh, the big Bakken barbecue, August 21st. Very interesting how, you know, what's going to transpire with the coronavirus and COVID 
And then post Sturgis, you know, there's going to be some backlash and some support after Sturgis because they they drew a line in the sand. That's that's calling it lightly. When, did they have sneezing contests? Didn't I read about that? Some bar opened up. Sne- yeah, in Sturgis they had sneezing contests. Who could sneeze I, sneeze the furthest on the crowd? I don't know about that. Oh, you I, better check check your I Google. Better, yeah, I'll, I'll check that. But I just don't. I just don't know about that. It kind of kind of seems like it's not really one of those types of events, but I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll talk about it next week because I'm going to look into that. That's, that's ridiculous. There's I'm your not. homework. Find out. No, I'm serious. I think I'm pretty sure I saw that headline. I'm pretty sure. I didn't click on it because I wanted to talk, wait and talk to you about it, and I never circled back because, well, I ended up taking the dog to the lake yesterday, and she wouldn't get out of the water, and it took me half an hour. Dexter and so and that rippled into my life, and you know how it goes. If things are, don't go as scheduled, the ripple happens, and then you just might as well throw the towel in for the day. And so, anyway, that's that's how that went. So, yeah, that's uh, I I did see that. God, boy, I I I'm like ninety percent sure now. I'm ni- I'm I'm getting more confident as we're speaking here that some tavern, some. Rapscallion Rambunctious Tavern, Sturgis, South Dakota, sneezing contest on the crowd. I, I've only found one thing, but it was a radio station mentioning it, and it doesn't give... What? August 10th. Sturgis Motorcycle Rally attendees lounge in bikinis, pack into bars, and mock mass marriage. It's like COVID does not exist here. I feel like... Riveting radio here as we Google search live. Right, right. Live I, on the air. Right. No, I, I feel like this, I, I will just say that I feel like there is a lot more editorialization in what we consider to be journalism nowadays. Is what I, was what I'm going to oh, say. Oh, for, for, for I, that I, crazy I statement I just said, regurgitating what I, yeah. what I read for a second or heard on the radio, absolutely that's editorialized. I'm sure there's a lot more to the story. Then again, it could be that simple, too. I mean, I've, well, you know, I, I've, I, I've been at some events that uh, have uh, started out with good intentions and they've ended badly when alcohol was involved. I've, I've been a part of those in my earlier days. Can't say I, you know, thank goodness that we didn't have cell phones recording every second of our day then. That's going to be a, by the way, that, that'll be a good bar. Check your cell phone in at the door. No, no cell phones allowed at the tables. Hmm? That would be, right? I, I actually think a lot of people enjoy that. I mean, there'd be quite a few people that would. Well, some people get in trouble now. One, one woman, she got busted because her husband just did a Google Earth search or something and saw her sitting on the bench with another guy and confronted her, and she got busted. Yeah, that was this week, too. Crazy stuff this week I saw in headlines. See what happens when you don't click on it? You just get a lot of gossip, a lot of boss right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got to come here this week. You know, This week is pretty, pretty good stuff, hard-nosed journalism this week. We're just talking about a lot of different things, so... You can but, check that out on the crudelife.com. The crudelife.com. Yeah, this week, by the way, for the Week in Review, we've got a segment that we're going to be featuring every week now called Mining Money because mining is really where the economy starts. And so we talk about the different ways, mining money. And this week we've got Brandon Davis and Imran Khan. They're a Swan Energy. Uh, they're a great company, by the way. They're buying natural gas leases. They own a gold mine. They've got a trucking company, an energy company. So they're, they're in a lot of different areas. The mining, they get it. Uh, so mining money. Bitcoin, by the way, is mining money too. And then we're going to be talking with the co-founders of the Bach and Barbecue. And then we've got some uh, chefs on, some cookers, if you will, giving us some barbecue tips and tricks and secrets this week on the Crude Life Week in Review. Well, sounds good. Thank you so much, Jason. You bet next week we got our, our homework, okay? Yes. So ne- next yes. week I will be live at the Bakken Barbecue, and I think we're going to be doing some fundraising, so I, I, I'll probably be asking for some money next week. So just heads up, folks. I don't do this. I'm not one of those guys, but I do it for the Bakken Barbecue, and that's it. That's my, that's my one kind of uh, plead for 
nonprofit money because I just I'm such a sucker for granting kids wishes. That's um, I, I cry every year. I'll admit it. I cry because it's it's an emotional thing. Well, we get to, you know you get to meet the kids and you know a lot of times and you know you get to talk to them and just it's it's um, it's the real deal. It's the real deal, folks. It's, you know it's it's this it's what these events are made out of. It's it's what they're made for. So anyway, just a heads up. I'm going to be asking for some money next week. <laughs> Do you like how I operate? <laughs> Blunt honesty. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Well, we're going to be doing uh, kind of a fundraiser. Like, we're, we're getting set up this year to have a Facebook campaign and, you know, kind of a pay, you know, one of those online fundraising because some people can't make it there, but they want to partake and it's kind of the end thing to do. And since, since I'm kind of driving the ship, I should probably use my network too and ask, which I generally don't like to do. Like, I haven't even really plugged my books on this hmm. platform. Maybe next week yeah, I'll do you that. Do that. Yeah, next week. Tell us about your books next week. Ask me about that because I'm working on another one too. That'll be out soon. It's going to be a nice. we- yeah. It's going to be a weekly chapter book, episodic. I got to figure out the fine tuning on that, but it, that one's going to be amazing. Can't wait for that oh. one. But all right, folks, we got to run. I'm just looking at the clock here. We're hitting 20 minutes, so we'll let you get to your commercial break and your sponsor and all that good fun. So check out the crude life. We'll ch- we'll see you next week. The Bach and Barbecue. Have a good week, Jason.